peasants are really foreigners in England, for their real home is in Asia. But they have been successfully reared in this country since before the Norman conquest, so by this time they are practically natives. Some of their gorgeous cousins that have more recently been introduced into the British Isles are the Amherst pheasants, Then there is the silver pheasant, with its light, bright plumage. Another foreign visitor is the Reeves pheasant, who, as you can see, is greedy and inclined to fight. The golden pheasant has glorious plumage, which blends well with the autumn woods. But the Argus pheasant, with his marvellous tail feathers, is too rare to let loose and needs the protection of wire netting. Pheasants are essentially forest birds, liking dense undergrowth with a certain amount of open space between. These English woods are a paradise for the ordinary pheasant, who finds that he can hide successfully even among the bare boughs of winter. While his feathers blend with the colouring of dead leaves and earth in the open rides. Pheasants are more at home on the ground than in the air. In springtime, when the trees are in leaf, the hen pheasant makes her nest by scraping a hole in the ground among the dead bracken and brambles. So well does her colouring match with her surroundings that it is almost impossible to see her, and only the winking of her eye betrays her whereabouts. chicks hatch out after about 24 days. Like all young birds hatched in open nests on the ground, they are very sturdy and can run a few minutes after they leave the shell. They are dressed in striped down so that they will be easily hidden among the stalks of the grass round their home. And they rely for safety upon this camouflage and upon their power to run. Here they are at a week old. And here at two weeks old. When young pheasants are hatching out, the keeper is always on the watch for their enemies. The stoat is an incurable egg sucker, and this bad habit leads to his untimely death. And an addition to the gamekeeper's larder, made up of the enemies of the young pheasants. The keeper cannot deal with all these enemies, however. The jay is another egg sucker, always on the lookout for an unguarded nest. The fox is always scouting about for a nice, juicy, sitting hen pheasant. And the owl is very fond of little pheasant chicks for breakfast. In view of all these dangers, the keeper resorts to artificial rearing to make certain of raising some young birds. He searches the woods for nests and puts the eggs into his capacious gamekeeper's pocket. This pocket is emptied out into a pail at his lodge.
Meanwhile, hen coops are being brought up to a nice sunny field. On one side of the field, the coops are placed in position, well sheltered from the winds by trees. They are also protected by wire netting from nature's pheasant eaters. The eggs are placed in the coops, 13 on each nest, and a farmyard hen is entrusted with the job of hatching them out. Every morning, the hens are given a short respite of a quarter of an hour for food and exercise, but are carefully tethered by the leg so that they don't stray too far. When the eggs have hatched, the coops are moved from the side of the field and are scattered all over it so that the little pheasants can have plenty of space to run about. But they can always come back to their foster mother. After about six weeks, the coops with the hens and young pheasants are taken off to the woods. Here, the keeper has established his kitchen, where he cooks the food that the young birds are accustomed to. Hard-boiled eggs mixed with grain. The pheasants are fed with this in the woods, under the watchful and anxious eyes of their foster mothers. Ah, that fetches them. In September, the hens and coops are removed and the young pheasants, now grown up, are left to themselves and are soon at home among the autumn woods. <laughs>